Now, the race to find water on the moon is heating up. Several countries are trying to stake a claim with an eye to establishing future lunar colonies. Recent Russian and Japanese attempts ended in failure, but India recently succeeded in landing at the moon's South Pole, and now Japan is trying again. Japan's lunar exploration mission, dubbed Moon Sniper, is designed to land with high precision, within 100 meters of its target site on the lunar surface. Tokyo is hoping its smart lander for investigating Moon or SLIM mission will allow it to join an exclusive international club, making it the fifth country after the US, China, Russia and India to successfully land on the moon. Its mission is to investigate rocks and deploy a small robot to take photographs. The country's space agency says it should reach its destination early next year. The launch comes just weeks after India became the first nation to land on the lunar South Pole. Both India and Japan are working together on a joint mission to explore the permanently shaded lunar poles. NASA and US companies are also preparing two more missions in the coming months. All of this works as a prelude to the next big step, the first manned mission since 1972 which in turn foreshadows the building of lunar bases, which are in planning by a number of different countries, all hoping to gain a permanent foothold on our closest celestial neighbour, and to get a head start on what could be the next frontier of geopolitical conflict. Well, for more on this, we're joined now by Derek Williams from DW Science. Derek, uh, tell us more about this Japanese mission and, and what sets it apart from the other lunar missions that we've seen recently. Well, a couple of different factors. Um, it's, it's called the Moon Sniper, nicknamed the Moon Sniper for a reason, which is that this is about precision landing. So the Japanese are trying to land within 100 meters of a predetermined spot on the moon's surface. Now, that, that might sound trivial, but it's really not. I mean, if you look at other, at other missions to the moon, many of them have landing zones that are kilometers wide. And, and the question of, of why we need this precision is a very important one, because if you imagine, for example, that, that moon base that we just saw uh, this, this futuristic moon base, you're gonna to wanna to be able to land your landers and to resupply the moon base as close as possible and not kilometers away. The other big aspect of, of this particular mission that's important is the economy. Now it's gonna take four to six months for this, for this lander to actually reach the moon, which is a very, very long time. If you think that the Apollo missions, for example, back in the, in the 60s and 70s, only took three days to get there. And, and so Japan is trying to prove that you can do this also economically. This is a small lander. It's only a couple of hundred kilos, but it's all about saving fuel. So precision and economy, those are the two yeah. big factors that are, that are really writ large, if you will, in this particular mission. Interesting. You know, we've seen a number of missions fail recently. Uh, people trying to land on the moon softly, as it were, and you know, successfully without destroying the the craft. Why is it apparently still so hard to soft land on the moon? I mean, as you as you mentioned, we've been doing this since the '60s. Well, it's uh, uh, moon landings are extremely complicated, and there's just a lot that can go wrong. I mean, starting with the launch of the rocket and moving on then to, to the decoupling of, of the particular mission from the rocket and then insertion into a lunar orbit um, as the Luna 25, uh, tw Russian Luna 25 uh, mission showed, that's also not always easy. And then of course there's this, there's this moment when you decide that you're going to land and at, at that point there's no going back. One of the project managers actually at JAXA, the Japanese space agency, said he talked about that, the landing, and he's expecting a breathless, numbing 20 minutes of terror, which is... <laughs> Of very descriptive. On these unmanned missions, there's just a, a lot that can, can go wrong, and the drivers sure. are sitting back on Earth 380,000 kilometers away. And they've been preparing for this for a long time. Uh, briefly, Derek, this is the third attempt to soft land on the moon this summer alone, and more missions are planned. Why this flurry of lunar missions? Well, I think that there's, uh, there's just this zeitgeist thing kind of going on. These missions were planned years, if not decades ago, but, but we're seeing, we've seen a revolution in, in, in technology that's really allowing us to, to take this step 
back again, this resurgence from the, from the 50s and the feeling in the 50s and 60s, not driven this time necessarily by politics, but by technology. So you're looking at digital technology, AI, you're looking at materials research, new materials that are allowing us to get up there and look at things. And, um, and, and it's just a, this resurgence of interest in, in also cornering possibly resources for the next steps that are helping us to kind of break the bonds of Earth. A lot of competition. Uh, any particular lunar mission coming up that we should be watching out for? Well, it's NASA and ESA, of course, would say it's Artemis, Artemis, Artemis. Um, the first uh, mission has, has been out there already, has flown around the moon and has come back. That was last year. They're going to be sending an, a, a manned uh, orbital mission uh, coming next year and then planning to relaunch and, and land uh, astronauts on the moon the year after that. Stuff from Japan and India, very exciting stuff. Also, China has said that um, it wants to set up a moon base um, and is starting to plan, planning to build in the next five years. Much to watch out for. Derek Williams from DW Science. Thanks.